So I am uh, Grégoire Courtin, I am professor at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. And for the past 15 years, I've been focusing on developing intervention to accelerate, improve functional recovery after spinal cord injury. The work that started initially in Los Angeles at UCLA and that I carried out after in my laboratory in Zurich and then now in Lausanne. So what I will present in my plenary lecture is a snapshot a summary of these 15 years of development that started first in rodents um, and led us all the way to work in non-human primates and human applications. What is the concept? Um, after a spinal cord injury, the cells, neurons that normally control leg movements, are located in the lumbar region of the spinal cord. In the majority of spinal cord injury, these circuits are intact. However, then they're in a non-functional state because the communication between the brain and this region of the spinal cord, the lumbar region, is interrupted because of the injury. So the communication is disrupted. What we have been doing first in Roland is to reactivate this lumbar circuit, meaning provide to these cells the type of information that the brain would deliver naturally in order to walk. So we deliver two sources of one modulation. This is done with pharmacology, specifically agonist to serotonin receptors. And second, electrical stimulation. You imagine electron on the, on the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord um, that deliver electricity. This is what we call an, an electrochemical neuroprosthesis. It provides the electrical and chemical source of information in order to transform this lumbar circuit from dormant to highly functional state. At this moment, parallel rats are able to show coordinated movement, for example, on a treadmill. This means in response to the movement of the treadmill belt. Of course, these movements are completely involuntary. They are really uh, showing the ability of the spinal cord to process sensory information and to activate the muscle in a very coordinated manner in order to produce this very automated stepping pattern. But this is the first step of this intervention, immediately enabling, enabling motor control. And then we train this animal, but we don't do it in a very classical manner. For this, we developed a very, like a cutting edge robotic interface that enabled to support the rat, similarly as the father would hold the young child in the first insecure steps. So the animal is supported against the direction of gravity in the mediolateral direction, but he really has to uh, work very hard in order to engage or try to engage the paralyzed leg. At the beginning, it does not work. The animal can work very well on the treadmill, but automatically, but when we put the animal over ground in the robotic interface, where well, we see that the animal you know, is stuck, he cannot engage this paralyzed leg. And then, progressively, the animal show one, two steps. You know, it's a very difficult process. You see the difficulty on the face of the animal. Yet, he realized the first steps. From this moment, they improve every day. They get better and better and better. And after several months of rehabilitation, a rat that normally should be completely paralyzed, when he decides, starts sprinting toward the reward that we put in, in front of the, of the runway. You know? It was the very first time I think that we observed in experimental spinal cord injury medicine the recovery of voluntary movement after a lesion leading to complete and permanent paralysis of the lower limb. Next question was, you know, what are the underlying mechanism? And here what we found was unexpected. We did not aim at regenerating, at growing the severed fibers, yet this very uh, like will-powered uh, base training with this high functional state of the circuit below the injury encourage the central nervous system to grow new fibers. It's not what you call a regeneration. It means that the fibers that don't go through the injury they're really dependent on spare tissue bridges that are you know, establishing new connections and that's what supports this recovery of a brain control of the movement of the paralyzed leg. 
So that was you know, 15 years of work. We understood all the detailed mechanism of how to best apply the stimulation, specific location of the spinal cord, specific timing. And for this, we developed a very extensive toolbox, a lot of neurotechnology technology that, that we'll present uh, that have been key in order to have what I would call an evidence-based concept to apply the stimulation in uh, higher mammals and eventually in humans. So the way we have been proceeded here before human application is to ensure that the concept were valid in a larger species and the technology was ready also for human application. So the best model for this is a non-human primate. So we have very great collaboration with Medtronic uh, in order to adjust the implantable pulse generator that have been used uh, commonly for deep brain stimulation therapy. But here is a new firmware that enables real-time control of the stimulation. We implanted this device in non-human primate, adjusted it with our you know, lead neural interface to stimulate the spinal cord and to deliver the stimulation that would really reflect directly the intention of the animal, we applied the concept of brain-computer interfaces, meaning we inserted electrodes into the brain of non-human primates, specifically in, in the region of the motor cortex that normally control leg movement. And then, based on the recording neural activity, we decode the motor intention, meaning whether the animal wants to do a flexion or an extension of, of the leg. And then we send this information to the spinal cord stimulator in order to trigger stimulation sequences that will induce the desired movement of the paralyzed leg. And here it was a big surprise for us because without any training, just turning on what we call wireless brain-spine interface, the animal by just thinking about using a paralyzed leg was able immediately to perform this very robust, strong movement of the leg in order to walk. It was perfectly integrated with the natural movement of, of the other intact legs. So this really established all the basic framework in order to enable translation towards first feasibility clinical studies. So using exactly the same stimulator that we have been validating in non-human primate, we have exactly the same algorithm, stimulation protocols that we developed first in rodent and again uh, validated in non-human primate. And in parallel, we established really the rehabilitation platform to provide the same type of cutting edge robotic assistance in order to uh, train people with spinal cord injury. And now we are starting, we are at the beginning of the adventure in humans, still a very long way to go, but this is not the, the first uh, step, being able to apply this uh, spatio-temporal neuromodulation of the spinal cord. As far as I know, it's the first real-time control of uh, neuromodulation of the central nervous system in closed loop, and this with a robotic assistance to you know, really obtain at this stage the very first proof of concept, whether the human spinal cord responds like rodents, and primates immediately with the stimulation, and second, whether we can remodel the residual connection from the brain in order to augment the functional recovery of people with spinal cord injury.